eliminate some of the red tape and the, the delay that goes with putting in a solar system in your house. And uh, part of the larger issue in energy policy right now is that one of the things that's holding back solar is the cost of permitting, and um, they call it soft cost. And so the price of solar panels has dropped really dramatically in about the past five years. It's down about 60%. But all the things um, in terms of legal costs and permitting, marketing, all that has kind of stayed the same. So that's kind of one of the things that's really holding back solar right now. So uh, we think it would be a great idea for Shorewood to make this solar permitting process faster and easier. And then also look at eliminating the $75 fee that goes along with that right now. If anything, we should be looking for ways to incentivize, make it easier and cheaper for people to, to go solar rather than uh, putting fees on it. So that's. That's um, just about all I had to say for the Conservation Committee. And I don't know if anyone else from the committee wants to speak, or, yeah, sure. but I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you. Chase Kelm at 1908 East Edgewood Avenue, uh, also a member of the uh, Conservation Committee. Uh, you know, one of the things that the Village Board has <coughs> looked at um, in the past is that. 25% renewable energy by, by the year 2025. And taking a look at that $75 fee, again, I think just echoing what, what Matt had to say was, you know, if we're going to hit that goal, we should be removing all fees and barriers and taking a look at, at incentivizing something like that. Also, I think there's other language that the board has approved about being an echo municipality. Um, so I think in order to be an echo municipality, we have to kind of walk the walk a little bit. So Talking. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we don't ask questions until we didn't move up the item. So, is there any else, anybody else um, in the public that would like to speak on this matter? Um, if not, we will close the public meeting, public hearing <laughs> at 7:54, um, and we'll go to the next public hearing, which. <laughs> I believe so. Okay, I'll, I'll move to reorder the agenda to move up 9F, consider ordinance to amend our regulation for the energy system. I'll second that, obviously. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, so now we will take up item number 9F. 9F. All right, consider ordinance 2096 to amend regulation of solar energy systems. Um, and I believe Bart, our planning director, is here to speak. So, just as a brief introduction, I mean, it was presented in your packet as well, but the planning commission has recommended approval of this proposed ordinance. Um, in brief summary, the ordinance would split a review of wind energy systems and uh, solar, solar energy systems into two categories. Wind energy would remain um, a condition used in all districts, subject to review and approval of the plan commission of the public hearing, so that process would stay the same. But in order to remove some of the red tape, as was discussed, solar energy systems would be a conditional use um, with the authority to review and approve um, granted through my department of planning development department. Um, with notice to adjacent property owners, and the review would be um, limited to what the state statutes allow us to do. So there's three categories. Um, serves and protects the public um, health or safety, does not significantly increase the cost of the system or significantly decrease the efficiency, or allow us for an alternative system of comparable cost and efficiency. So essentially this is bumping up the review um, to my department. Over the past probably five or so years, we've reviewed over 20 of them. There's been no real opposition at a public hearing from many members of the public, and the plan commission generally approved them as submitted, so this is just kind of making it quicker and easier for us to get to that decision and, and giving that authority to my department based on these three things, which are limited by state statute. So um, the plan commission was in favor of it. Just one quick reference regarding the fee. Um, it is a $75 fee that is intended to cover you know, the cost of reviewing through the department. Um, I think it, in typical, and, and the conservation committee can quote me or this correct me if I'm wrong, the projects are typically fifteen to twenty thousand dollars somewhere in there. So a seventy five dollar fee isn't all that onerous in my department's perspective. I do I do appreciate the desire or need to you know promote this as much as we can, but we did um, seek to maintain that just in part to um, you know pay for the cost of new services within the department. So 
the planning commission recommends approval. The packet was prepared. Um, um, the city the village attorney also reviewed, um, reviewed the packet and did provide comments as well that were incorporated. So, Jesse uh, Warren. Uh, th thank you very much for the, uh, the proposal. I agree that this fits very well uh, within the core values of our village, um, conservation, environmentalism. Um, and, and I do like the fact that, that, that some of the notice pieces are retained in here, um, that is, the neighbors get notice and a chance to, to talk to you. Uh, my question is, and uh, maybe I missed this, I read, there's a big packet we had to read, sure. I read through it a little while ago, but if you decide that this fails one of the uh, criteria to get back up to the commission, or is it something where it's, it's, it's a hard stop there? I think it would go to the Board of Appeals. So the Board of Appeals has, applicants can review administrative decisions from <coughs> the Board of Appeals, so this would be an administrative decision, okay. so there would be a process to kick up there if they'd like to. Okay, okay, thank you. And I'd just like to remind everyone to speak into the microphones. I always forget. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Trustee Maher. So are you applying the conditional use criteria? Uh, review criteria? Well, for solar energy systems, these are the criteria yeah. currently. It's A, B, and C. It's not the other conditional use criteria. It's these specific ones. That's what the code currently reads. Okay. So these are the three criteria that would be administered with the review. So it's a conditional use of these three criteria specified. And the adjacent, say the adjacent, well, how do you envision the adjacent property on? Say you email or mail the comments to you, and then you just consider them in your review? or. Correct. So I and public comment can't be the reason for you know denial of conditional use permit by itself. So we would take the comments into consideration to see if it fits one of these three categories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I currently envision mailing them. Um, if it needs to be certified to, to keep it with the record, we can do that as well, and then give them perhaps up to a week to um, contact our office to mm -hmm. you know express any opinions they have. But public opinion can't be the sole reason for denial. So it would just be taken into consideration alongside these three parameters. Any other questions? I um, I definitely support. I supported this from day one when we started the solar. Anything we can do to make it a quick, like whatever we want to be supportive of and happen in our village, you, you make less onerous in the regulations and what you want to not be in our village, we regulate heavily. And so I think anything we can do to speed up the process or eliminate costs for us to reach our goal at 25% for energy efficiency at the village is a positive. Um, I would like the board to just think about whether the, the fee we can waive, how much do you think we make in fees for solar applications a year? I mean, like I said, over the past five years, there's been approximately 20, 25, so you're talking five times 75, it's $350 somewhere in there. Right. It, it, I mean, it does cover the cost of services in order for me to, whether it's mailing out the, you know, adjacent property notifications or, or my time to review it. If the board wanted to make that decision and then find that, you know, funding elsewhere, based on the fee, that's, that's one thing. But the only reason we kept it, maintained it is in part based on the direction to, you know, cover the cost of the service. Of those people. And is the mailing... Do you, do you know how much mailings usually cost? I mean, if it's just the adjacent property owners, they can, you know, potentially three, four, five, depending on how the plot, plot is situated. That probably say certified mailing is maybe three dollars, not even five, five dollars, fifteen dollars for the mailing. Um, that is just the cost of the time for the review. Of yep. And do you know? And last question, sorry guys, but do you know how, if like other communities have waived the fee? I don't know. I, I'm not even for sure necessarily what other communities do in terms of, I, I can say in West Dallas, we did not have a specific review of solar panels. It went in as um, uh, electrical permit, and so there was no conditional use attached to it. There was a discussion of the Planning Commission whether or not to even maintain the conditional use permit. It was the Planning Commission's decision to maintain conditional use review on it. Had that, you know, been changed to permitted use, it would have, you know, just gone as an as a electrical you know, permit in that res respect. But because we are reviewing the conditional use aspect on top of the electrical permit, I, I feel like perhaps most communities might just do the electrical permit, you know, scenario. So our fee might be above what other communities might have, but I don't have that specific research in front of me, unfortunately. So the plan commission to recommended to the board, correct, to keep the conditional use overlay review? Correct. Hmm. And I mean, part of that was, um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. 
Part of the, there was a there was a desire to um, keep these three <coughs> review components within the approval, so that if in fact there was you know any discussion of whether or not there was development in the future that was precluded by a solar panel, there would at least be a, a review on file of, of where that came from. So there was a discussion by the planning commission to maintain these requirements, but they felt as though the authority to determine them did not need to go to a public hearing at the planning commission level. Just about course. I'll reserve it in case it comes up in motion. Any just a Well, I would just make a motion to approve the ordinance number 20. 96 to amend the regulation of solar energy systems. Second. Um, so, can we revisit at some point? I don't want to amend the motion, but I do feel pretty strongly that we should be even cutting back regulations on further, whether it means eliminating the, the conditional use or whether it means lowering the fee to just cover the, the mailing. I don't know when that would occur, maybe next year or. Okay, Trustee Bachers. Okay, since you brought it up, um, and I don't know the whole process as far as when the fee is collected, but I would agree with that, especially if we want to incentivize people to reduce um, dependence on fossil fuels. However, maybe we want to reserve it as a refundable fee for those 